put in the uh, chat what library you're affiliated with. That would be great. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows where sort of everyone is throughout the state who are joining us. Uh, I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. Thanks so much for making the time to join us today. Uh, we're using uh, our sort of regular DLIS discussion period for a quarterly, and today's our first, quarterly COHA user group. Uh, and uh, uh, although we're uh, focusing on this topic, if you have other things that you would like to share, you certainly may do so during the course of this hour. These sessions are for you. Um, we began this conversation about COHA and uh, I think it was in May of this year, uh, we sort of did like a, a DLIS discussion on this topic. But at that meeting, several people indicated that they would really be interested in creating a user group. So here we are. Uh, and I'm counting on all of you to share your tips, your experiences, your questions with each other, because you are probably much more well-versed with COHA than I am. Um, I've also talked to, um, uh, I've forgotten the woman's name, but the, the uh, Bywater Solutions uh, um, representative who uh, used to work in Florida, I believe, in a Florida public library. Um, and so she may be joining us in this conversation as well. I thought I'd just start off with a, a couple of questions that we began with the last time we talked about this in May. Um, and, but if you have something you want to start with, feel free to jump in. I, I'd just like to know what were some of the reasons that made you decide to try COHA? What were you using before? Why were you dissatisfied? Were you dissatisfied? Did you just want to save money? What, what, what was your impetus? Jane, are you using uh, COHA now? Yes, but um, the library um, had it when I started back uh, last year. Okay. So I don't know any experience other than COHA. Oh, well, good. Well, what do you think of it? Well, I like um, the, you know, the, the accessibility and that it um, you can easily find things in it. But um, I guess there was one area that I'm struggling to find out, um, like how, because sometimes it seems that it doesn't work well to, um, when you're checking in books, because we still check in uh, readers, patrons' books on our own, and um, they don't always seem to be checked in. Hmm. So you think there's a glitch in the software or... Well, maybe in the software, or maybe we're just not doing it right. I see. Does anyone have any suggestions for Jane? There are a couple known issues right now with how Koha handles tr items in transit. For example, if an item's on hold for someone and the item is placed in transit, and before it reaches the destination, the hold is canceled. When you scan the item at the destination, it won't tell you anything it'll just act as if it belongs there, for example. So there are some issue, known issues with transits right now, whether or not that's related to your check-in issue, I can't say, but there are some of those issues. Does we, that go ahead, Claudia. Um, go ahead. We, we have been using Koha, uh, same like Jane mentioned, um, when I started, they already, we, our library already got Koha, so, um, but, it seems that we are doing pretty good, except like what Jen mentioned, that was is um, if someone um, if someone has hold, sometimes like they transfer the items and it, it only at that time we had this issue like it's transit, but it's not actually in transit. So it's we are still watching that it's maybe user error. Sometimes maybe we had like it's transfer, but maybe our stuff 
you know, didn't click on transfer, something like that. So we are watching that issue in our system. And I see that Michael has shared uh, a link to the bugs, some bug fixes. And he's saying handy side for checking info current on into current bugs and improvements in COA. And Hasina, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, you did. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I did. So I know that uh, Okaloosa has just implemented um, COA in their system. Uh, is there anyone from Okaloosa with us today? They may have a lot of questions or maybe they're too busy <laughs> trying, trying to get the implementation to, to smooth out and do to, uh, I know that's why Vicki Stever couldn't join us today. She, uh, she said, I'm, I'm swamped with trying to address questions and, uh, you know, troubleshoot. Uh, so, but I, but I also know that Michael has been uh, using Koha uh, for quite a while. Uh, Michael, what, what were your thoughts on um, why you, your library decided to try Koha? Um, originally, it, I believe it was a cost saving measure. It would simply cost much less than Symphony, which we were using at the time. Plus Symphony was very rigid and it didn't feel very customizable for what we needed. It may have been, but we just didn't have the staff to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that Koha being you know remote usable is just amazing for our purposes. Great. And you all are, is everyone here using Bywater as a support for that, for their uh, instance? We are in Lake County, yes. Karen says yes. Yes, the Three Rivers, Zeppelin is. Okay. Hi, this is Karen Fellows from Citrus County. I just wanted to let you know that we went live with Koha in 2018. And prior to that, we had um, Cersei Dynex, um, which was very expensive. So that was one of the main reasons why we switched over to Koha. Um, we can tell you that it's very customizable. Um, Bywater's great as far as their customer service and support. Um, any kind of tweaks or bugs or fixes, they're on it really quickly. Um, whereas with Cersei Dynex, we didn't really get that same kind of level of support. I um, hmm. think that's the gist of that. Great, thank you, Karen. Sure. So what is the learning curve for for COA? Is it? Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure Bywater probably provides a lot of support, as as you mentioned, as well as uh, there are likely tutorials that are provided and so on. Um, but what did you? Th you know, how long did it really take you to get familiar with the product and comfortable, despite the bugs? <laughs> Well, coming from Cersei, um, it's, I mean, it's, they're all similar, um, but like I think it was said before, um, Koha is so easy to use. If you're used to using a website or any kind of search engine, you, you just click around and you can get to where you need to get to. Um, uh -huh. It's pretty user friendly. Um, training, um, Bywater came and did some staff training with us. So it was a couple of days length of time where we had an admin session when you know behind the scenes and did all that kind of background stuff um, but then we did you know frontline staff um, had their own training so it, you know they have a, a really good process of how to do the training for staff so it really was not that difficult great I'd like to add something um, uh, add with uh, Jane that, you know, we have like uh, by water, they have like a lot of community interest group. So uh, cataloging, for example, acquisition, some people are doing some enhancement. So 
they also have those group you can join this group some of them like um, quarterly some of them monthly and they actually discuss that okay what i have this issue what can i do then other people say oh i use these things um, so this is very helpful and i learned a lot of things from there um, when i started koha and what is your role asina at your library I um, I am a virtual services librarian, so I actually mainly work with Koha and the cataloging team. So I kind of like can always look for that. What uh, how can improve like you know cataloging and the frontline people. So I mm -hmm. I mainly work with ILS, yeah, Koha ILS. So are you doing uh, like training your staff as well, or the staff you work with as well? I do, I do. So um, I used to do frontline, like frontline stuff too, but right now we have trainer. Um, so, uh, but Bywater does it like every month, every Monday, they also release like five minute, um, for example, how to catalog items. So it will be very short uh, tutorial. Uh, so that is very helpful. Um, like I said that when I started, I have a zero knowledge with Koha. So I kind of like to focus on those type of thing. Um, and also um, those interest group, like I believe that they have four interest group. One is works for report and one is acquisition cataloging. Um, yeah, I think four or four, four or five interest groups. So I also attend there and I follow those like, you know, they have um, they have YouTube channel and they have like a blog post. So that also helped me to learn um, like, you know, what is coming or what they have already invented. So if I see something useful for our staff, so I just, you know, follow the instruction, um, try to do that. Sometimes it doesn't work 100%. Then I also uh, place the ticket and buy water is awesome. They just right away help us. Yeah. Here's a question in the chat. Is everyone getting COA support from Bywater or is anyone using Equinox or Trident instead? some people responding in the chat co uh by water lantana uses by water and i'm not familiar with these other two that are listed um so i can't respond to that but So what what was involved and in, you know what was sort of the um, what were the difficulties you faced in, in uh, migrating your data uh, records to Koha from Cersei or from whatever you were using before? For us, it was pretty easy. It was. Um... They could, it happened over a weekend. Um, I had just had to upload certain files. Um, and again, they walked us through exactly what they needed and how to do it. Um, a lot of it was ahead of time. We had to do some mapping as far as what goes where and how things align because certain things are a little bit different than Cersei workflows. Um, but once we got all that set, um, it literally took I don't know, a couple of hours and we were, we were live, you know, within a day. So it was pretty seamless. That's great. Did others have that same experience? Hi, this is Josh. Can you guys hear me? Hi, Josh. Hello. So yeah, that was very similar to our experience with the Cephalon group as well. Um, yeah, just a lot of mapping. Basically, they had to send what their you know catalog and, and ILS currently look like, what the patron categories would be, and item types, and then Bywater 
took it from there. They scheduled like a three day training to get everybody up to, up to speed. And then they've just been available to answer questions from there. They like, um, like Asino was pointing out, they have all kinds of tutorials on their website and, and everything too. So it was a fairly uh, straightforward process. I mean, ours was a little bit more complicated because we had four individual libraries coming onto one one ILS. They were already on one ILS. They came from Cersei, but you know, it was a lot of like, okay, well, we have to set the rules and and, and all that. But otherwise, it was a other than that, it was a fairly straightforward process, and that wasn't anything on Koha or Bywater's part. That was just wrangling cats on our part, you know. Good to know. Anyone else have anything they want to share about the implementation? So what is the user experience like for, for patrons? Any complaints? When we first moved to Koha, we did have some, you know, I don't like change kind of complaints. But aside from that, <laughs> over time, because you have so much control over the OPAC and the presentation you give to the patrons, you can take you know their feedback and make any sort of improvements you need to to accommodate their needs or make just general improvements to the experience for them. It's it's very customizable, so there's not any issue there. Sometimes it's hard to uh, satisfy people, regardless of how easy it is, uh, if they are just opposed to change. But uh, <laughs> it's nice that you're able to tweak it as easily as it sounds like, Michael. Uh, from my standpoint, just from like a feedback, I, I don't have any firsthand experience with how our, the patrons from these libraries have enjoyed it. But when I was exploring different ILSs for this group, I called a lot of people who already had Koha and some other open source ones. And I tried very hard to find any negatives about Koha from these libraries using it. And I couldn't get, nobody had a negative thing to say about Koha. I, I wow. beg them to say negative. I'm like, there has to be a con, please. We have to have a list. They didn't, they didn't have any. So that that was wow. a couple of years ago even too. So I'm sure it's probably better now, but yeah. So by having, um, you know, Bywater involved, is the cost still less, you know, and having an oh, open yeah. source, this is probably a, a silly question, but having a an open source um, platform software, uh, but paying someone for support and for, you know, the back end work, I would assume. Mm -hmm. uh, does that still, is that still a cost savings? For our group, it, it certainly is. They came from Cersei and they're, they're saving a ton of money, even having Bywater host it. And when we looked at, so we looked at Bywater, we looked at Koha and I believe Ever green is that what it's called or what i forget now but um we looked at two open source ones both of which were hosted by other organizations and they both were significantly cheaper than any of the the out of the box ones like cersei or polaris or triple i or any of those so thank huh. you casey yeah so yeah i would say it's still cost effective as somebody who gets the invoices that's good to know have we yeah, got in Lake County's case, it was significantly less expensive to switch from a Cersei product to the open source with Bywater hosting it. Mm -hmm. So do you have people on staff who are also doing backend coding as well? Or do you leave that completely up to Bywater? Or, you know, you said it was easy to customize, Michael, but I, I think Josh said that too, but um, I assume that's for people who have that kind of back-end knowledge, you know, the, the coding uh, experience. Um, so how, how hard is it to learn to code? Um, for the type of coding you're going to do 
in terms of customizing Koha, which is mostly front-end development, like some JavaScript, some HTML, some CSS, that's all actually fairly simple to learn. You, do, you don't need a, a big coding background to, to handle that kind of customization. Um, JavaScript is notoriously finicky at times, but it's, it's actually something that most people, if you have any technical background at all, you probably could pick it up with just a quick weekend course, um, just something you could pick up online, really. That's good. Um, Eli shared for for us, uh, and I'm sorry, Eli, I don't remember what library you're with, but uh, the cost has been thousands less. That's quite an enticement, I would say. Let's see. Oh, and Eli is also sharing lots of coding and customization can be done by us at the library, which is uh, CSS, HTML, JavaScript. Co Koha makes that easy to do. It really does, yeah. And something else you can do with Koha, I don't, I'm not sure how new this is, but you can actually take any SQL report that you write and set it up to where it will um, output in just a JSON format. So you can actually write your own external applications that pull from Koha's data and then use that data however you see fit with a third party application, which we actually are doing at Lake County right now is creating like a statistical dashboard for users that don't want to deal with SQL reports, but they still want to see their statistics in an easy to digest format. Hmm. Would you share a little bit more about that with us, Michael? Uh, Hasina says they do that too. So maybe Hasina, you could talk about that as well. I'd like to hear a little bit more from Michael because um, we do um, we do have some report and those are like open, kind of like uh, public. And then we have a third party I forgot this right now. Um, and then they shows us all the stats. So we don't have to do anything. The report is uh, automatically always is run. Like for example, how many new patrons we have, how many circulations are there. So it's automatically the, the value goes to the third party. We don't have to do anything. We just set the report as a public. So we'd like to know from Michael that how they are doing it. Oh yeah, what we're doing is fairly similar. You you do have the option, of course, of taking any of that data since it's exported in JSON format, and you can plug it into any third-party service that maybe you're paying for. Um, I think I've heard of like Gecko Board one time. Someone was using that. Um, we're writing our own dashboard right now to just to save money, I suppose. <laughs> but um, yeah, you just take any SQL report that you write in Koha, mark it as public, and then it's accessible from the OPAC side, although patrons can't see it without knowing what the actual URL would be, which is pretty tricky to do, so they wouldn't go digging into it. And then that public report exports in JSON, and any web-based application, you can pull that in there and parse it any way you'd like. You're talking way over my head, I'll tell you that. But <laughs> I'm hopeful that everybody here knows what's what uh, you're you're discussing. Um, I don't have that coding background, so uh, do others feel comfortable with the coding, or do you have others, uh, other colleagues who will help with that, or do you just prefer to rely on Bywater? Eli, was there anything you wanted to share on coding and customization at your library, at your system? I don't know if you have a mic.
he says, I'm not the strongest coder, but whenever I run into a problem, Bywater helps get the project done. That's good to know. And Jane's saying they rely on Bywater as well. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges to having open, you know, to, to trying open source software is knowing that you are going to need uh, that support, um, whether you're paying for that support from a, a third party or you have that, uh, that kind of staff um, ability or interest uh, within your library. Uh, open source is great as long as you have the support. <laughs> I found that to be true in the past, that it, for me anyway, um, not in this position, but in other positions. I would definitely agree with that in terms of open source, like, but at least you have the option as opposed right. to something like a Cersei product mm -hmm. where you're pretty much relying on their software developers to handle it, but at least you call how you need the support but the options there for anything you want to do yeah yeah and i like the idea of customizing to you know tweaking things the way you want it at your library or in your system uh that that that's very a very nice feature whereas if you're paying for a product you're getting you know their product essentially uh and and they may not want to change something until um you know, there uh, there are several interested people asking for that customization. Um, I don't know. Hey, when I think I can add a little bit in there um, that whoever wants to take Koha not to be afraid in a way that uh, right now there is lots of things in out there. Maybe who were in the beginning, they had to struggle a little bit more because not that many resources are out there. Um, yeah, it's true that you need to do some coding uh, SQL uh, to run those report, but Bywater always encourage that if you need anything, just place a ticket, we will do that. And they are very good with that. That's one thing. And another one is a um, lot of people are out there, the community partner people, they are really uh, doing a lot of good things. So if you know that what you are looking for and you know a little bit that how it will work, uh, you will get the answer very quick. Yeah. Is the code available on GitHub? Is that where you got it? They have wiki. So yeah, all those code, uh, whoever does it is over there and the updated version is there too. So yeah, you get from there. Mm -hmm. So when you were getting started, uh, those of you who do have it right now, uh, where did you create a sandbox to test it out? How, how did you, you know, what was the process that you used to see if you liked it? It has been a long time, I think 2014 since we initially transitioned, but I do remember that they did have a um, a small sandbox set up for us to do staff training initially and just give it a try in general. By then the decision had already been made for us that we were <laughs> moving to it, but they did set something else for, for, up to, for us to look at and to try out and get just get a handle on it before we went live. And nobody was terribly opposed or... Nobody could um, find a good reason for not giving it a try, huh? No, I don't think there were any major <laughs> objections at the time. Yeah. On Bywater's website, they also have a demo. You can always go on there and play around with it yourself. Um, you can look at the staff side, and I think you can look at the patron side and just play around and they reset it I think every hour or I forget what the timing is but um, you can go on there and change things play around with things um, especially that's helpful when they do upgrades so you can kind of see what's coming with the latest upgrade they upgrade the software I think it's every six months or so depending upon the schedule um, and that can always be interesting if that 
changes some of the customizations of your particular library's settings. Um, mm -hmm. So it's something to, to look out for when that message pops up. What kind of lead time do they give you? Um, they usually give you about a month. Um, and they do webinars and different um, different things to kind of inform you of all the different changes that are coming. Because it's open source, a lot of the um, enhancements are are done from all libraries all over the place, not just in the United States, but in the world. So lots of little tweaks and things get fixed, um, which may be good for those libraries, but maybe not good for your library. So it's something that you have to look at when those upgrades happen. We, we, I think we had the... When I think you're on twice here. Um, okay, let's try that again. Does that sound good? Go. Okay, very, very good. Sorry about that. Um, we did, we, they set up kind of a, a, a practice um, site for us and loaded up our data so that we had a chance to, you know, um, check things out, do some cataloging, do the different things, see where things are in um, the Koha before we went live with it. So um, they, there was a, you know, kind of a trial period. And then last Monday was when we went live. And there's been a few small uh, things, but it was really uh, pretty easy. The staff, um, you know, have, have felt comfortable with it so far and uh, you know and because you can go in and work with it you have a lot more control with it than you do with one of the proprietary systems and I it almost uh, feels like you you get a better buy-in because then you can um, help uh, help with things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, when you're with uh, Okaloosa is that right mm -hmm. Okaloosa County the, um, library co-op. I'm at the Destin Library. Great. So they're, they, they, as I mentioned earlier, I think it was before you got on when y'all are very new and Vicki said she was pretty much uh, troubleshooting and, and answering emails and ensuring things were running smoothly. <laughs> so She's buried. She's just buried right now trying to answer how do you do this and how do you find that and how does this work and how do you, you know, there's all of those things when you first get going. So, but uh, yeah, so, so we're getting it, getting it all figured out. Awesome. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. Bywater is very helpful, and um, you know has been very responsive. And so, uh, and I've been digging around in some of the coding and some of the things to try to figure out um, how to do some things. And some of it I don't understand yet. But I, I feel pretty good that that I will. And um, once I, you know, can I have been able to get around into some things and, and figure it out and and um, get things some things updated. So it's just practicing with it. You can't break it, you know. So uh, the roof doesn't fall in if you make a mistake. So it's just kind of getting in there and and uh, fiddling with it. I think you've got a good group here to help you with any of the coding questions that you have too, if you need that assistance, although you do have Bywater as well. Yes, well, that's why I kind of wanted to get involved with this group because I'm sure there are things will come along that we'll have a chance to talk about. Oh, what do you think about this piece and would that be better and how have y'all done that? So I think that, I think that it will be a, a good opportunity to have a chance to talk to other users. Great. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And I see I want to welcome uh, Lucy Carter. She's a new the new library director at Apalachicola Pub Public Library. Um, she says our library would likely rely on Bywater. She's with Apalachicola and they're currently using Apollo public facing bibliotics. Anybody have an experience with Apollo and what's making you decide to move to something different, Lucy? I don't, 
know if she has if she has a um, a mic. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Something just went quiet. <laughs> I didn't know if it was me being cut off or what, but uh, anyway, Lucy, if if you want to chime in at some point, um, and Michael shares there's some jQuery snippets on the wiki, for example, he also shared a, a link to that jQuery. Um, let's see. I don't know anything about Apollo. Is that is that a proprietary or is that open software? Does anyone have a particular issue that they would like to ask the group or just start chatting in general about um, challenges you've had, but that have smoothed out as you have started using COA? I think that maybe Okaloosa could benefit from that if you had any issues first, first out, of the, out of the gate. Well, I want to move things around on the home page. So if y'all know how to get in there and um, work with the HTML, I'm wanting to move some of the uh, uh, buttons around. And thing. Are you referring to the, the staff client or the, yeah, the, the staff API? client? Mm -hmm. Ah, OK. Yeah, in, in the staff client, you do have some options in the administration panel. Um, there is a, a CSS and a JavaScript um, user preference that you can put custom, you know, your custom uh, customizations into. <laughs> Yay, words. Um, <laughs> whether or not you can move them around in, you know, to to look exactly how you want, that might take a lot more effort than you may be willing to put in. But you can move them around, style them however you'd like, and. Um, you can find that in the administration panel under, I believe, intranet user CSS and intranet user JS. Okay, I will look for that. There is a, on the, the home page, there are two little things. One says suggestions pending approval, and the other one says patrons requesting modification, and it's they're kind of like an afterthought. They're down at the bottom of the page, and I'm wanting to relocate those up to the top left above the um well right now the box says practice exercises and news uh relocated up there so that it's easier for staff to find i can oh, yeah. uh go ahead go ahead oh, no, you, no you go ahead you go ahead um i think what she was looking for i was looking for the same thing to do in yeah. my them um it it is right now on the on the bottom but you can do it on your right hand side uh the the people the group the two person they actually did pretty nice um enhancement um i will look like maybe like during this time i can find that one that you the, the the youtube and also they gave that code outside so if you just uh copy this code and put it in your um I think it's CSS or maybe um, in the internet in interface, maybe in uh, in the administration. Uh, then mm -hmm. it will change. Um, but they already mm -hmm. created everything, so I can I can find the link for you and send over here. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I haven't done that, but that's in my to do to do list. Yes, yes, it's um, uh, because it's down there. People forget to to check that, and so. Um, I would definitely want to make sure they, you know, that piece uh, gets looked at. It. Uh, yeah, so. let me. Mm -hmm. yeah, almost every part of Koha that you see on each page, it has its own, you know, unique identifier. In that case, I believe it's area dash pending. And if yeah. you can just write like a small jQuery snippet that takes that 
identifier and just moves it to a different place on the screen and then changes maybe some of the styling on it to make it bigger or you could even make it look mm -hmm. like one of those other buttons that appears on the screen that right. says circulation catalog you can make it look like one of those and just pile it in with the rest of them and it should only be two or three lines of code at most yeah i found someone it was on i guess there are some youtube tutorials as well and he his accent was really strong, so I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I was following the, the video, and so he was going in and changing the background colors. And so I, I figured it was probably in there somewhere so you could move it, move it uh, around. I just hadn't uh, located uh, that piece of it yet, so. And I have, what, what is a mashup? I've come across some things or some tutorials and it talks about the mashup. Does anybody know what that is? Mashup is, is like a, a uh, combination of different elements. Uh, it can apply to music, it can apply to um, all kinds of things, but I, I'm assuming that that means the same thing in Poha speak. <laughs> I I wasn't I wasn't sure because uh, some of the um, things that I have gone to uh, in the help section it says something about the library the library mashup or something, and I'm thought I don't know if that's some coding or if that is uh, a program or what that meant so there's lots of things to learn yes does anybody have any um other uh tidbits for mashup what mashup means to them in this particular case hey when it's donna i think what you're seeing is there's um, a book that's used as an example over and over in the manual, and it's called Library Mashups. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Yeah, that's what you're seeing. Okay. Okay. I thought it was something to do with Koha. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> So Ricky Donnelly, I saw you're from Martin County. Are you all using Koha, or are you thinking about it? See if he's got a web a um, mic. Uh, let's see, Hasina posted a link. Um, let's see if anyone else has put anything in chat. Hi, Claudia. Yeah. Hey, I think you addressed me earlier, but I had to run onto the floor to take care of something. Um, oh. I'm at a very small library, if anyone's familiar with the city of Apalachicola. Yes, uh, hi, Lucy. Hi there. And currently we use Biblionics, and so we're kind of at this point where we're wondering if we should move to Koha since the um, surrounding libraries primarily use Koha. So I'm just curious how other people um, came to the conclusion to uh, switch platforms. Well, I guess I can speak for the co-op is one of the things was that it saved uh, quite a bit of money for the co-op. We were uh, using um, Cersei and um, it, it seemed like every year there was always an increase in something or if you 
wanted to get the customized report module, then that was, you know, an extra expense. And so we, we uh, looked at some other things and um, they decided to, to try Koha. And I know that um, there was another uh, library that we were uh, talking to and they had it and loved it and liked the flexibility of it and um, the fact that it, I think one of the big things that sold us was the fact that it is in the cloud and it's in the internet so that it doesn't have to be tied then to uh, the county server and you know there doesn't have to be as uh, much uh, storage in that in that piece of it so if I need to get on Koha if I wanted to, I could get on it from my cell phone or, you know, wherever I happen to be and check into something and help somebody with something. And so uh, one of my staff was laughing about they're going to start running into people in the grocery store and they're going to be renewing items for people in the grocery store, that kind of thing. So I think that being able to, um, you know, go to something that is in the cloud uh, was something that was a big benefit for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit that I've done some work in Koa on my phone while waiting in a checkout line or something <laughs> every now and then. It's great for that, though. It's, it's wonderful that you can do something like that with an ILS. That is true. I, I, I find it amazing, though, that uh, People, there's no escape from work. <laughs> it's a good, it's both a blessing and a curse, I think. Yeah. Yes, it's right in, in your pocket with you. Well, we too, the way being part of a co-op, so we had the county IT department that were, had computers in the library, and then we were also the city of Destin, so we had the city of Destin IT department had their computers in the library and we were, well, is this the county got to fix this or is this the city got to fix this? Oh no, you can't do run the printer to that one. That's a county computer. You got to go over. So with us being switching over to a system that, you know, is in the clouds like that, we can consolidate and have one IT department instead of having two IT departments. Um, run in the library, and that's going to be make a big difference. Asina says she likes that too. Well, I'd like to know if you all would like to continue this conversation and. Uh, uh, three months. I thought we'd try to meet quarterly if that works for you all. Um, I don't know if you would like to meet in December, early December, or would prefer to wait until the fir after the first of the year. Um, what is your thinking? You can put something in chat. You can tell me, you know, verbally, or you can make a face at me and do whatever you like. Claudia Praco, I kind of like your name, Claudia. Um, she says either way is fine. January for Lantana. Anybody else? December is kind of tough for some people. Quarterly sounds good. Oh, and Eli shares, uh, he also likes quarterly, but says if anyone is interested in learning more about COA, the COA US annual conference is happening this week. And he shared the link. Awesome, thank you. And it's free online, Donna says. Free online registration. Thanks, Donna. 
Anything else that you all would like to share? I'll set something up and hopefully this, uh, we will probably be meeting um, and during the DLIS discussion. By the way, if you're not familiar with DLIS discussion uh, time, uh, we meet every uh, third Monday of the month from three to four to talk about any kind of topic that's sort of struck somebody's fancy and, and uh, I can get people to come and talk about and share their ideas and their thoughts on that particular topic. Um, it's always nice to have frontline staff and people behind the scenes sharing their experiences on these topics. Um, some things we've talked about include, oh gosh, everything from library lockers to um, compassion fatigue to, uh, I'm blanking out now, fine free, going fine free. We've done all kinds of things. Um, technical topics are certainly uh, welcome. Yes, you may, Hasina. Um, if you are, uh, if you have a topic, please feel free to share it with me. What I'll do is um, email anyone who wants me to have, to put them on their, on my list. Um, and if you have people who are interested in attending who aren't on the list, please invite them to join us. Uh, I'd love to see people's smiling faces. So if you have a webcam to share, that'd be awesome. If you have a mic, that's fine too. Or if you just have typing fingers, that'll work. Uh, we just want you to, to join us and to um, share whatever your challenges or your experiences are. Um, just want to let you know that this has been recorded and will be shared on our, uh, BL, our BLD YouTube channel. And um, our next gathering for uh, the DLIS discussion will be October 18th and we'll be announcing the topic and our building success newsletter and via social media and our listservs. If you're not familiar with any of uh, those items, please go to the DLIS website. Uh, Daryl, would you post that website address, please? Um, and sign up for any of these um, venues. We'd love to have you be a part of, of who we are communicating with. Um, until we meet again, whether it's in October or December or January, uh, please be safe, stay healthy, and let us know how we can assist you in your work, please. Thank you all for joining us today and take care. And Claudia, uh, Claudia oh, Proco's hand was up. It was going up and down, so I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not, but. She, what's that uh, again? Claudia Proco may have her hand up. She had her hand up? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, it went for me, it was going up and down. So I'm not sure if it was an accident or not, but it's currently okay. raised. So just in oh, case. She said, no, it's okay. Accident. Okay. Thank okay. you. I thought so maybe <laughs> going up and down. Like but... that. We just, we're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. See you next time.